it really shouldn't have been possible. What started out as a joke turned into one of television's all-time best sequels. Even with its sixth and final season premiering on Netflix, it's still hard to believe that what could have been just another generic cash grab sequel turned into one of the most popular franchise revivals of all time. Despite its current massive popularity, previous to Cobra Kai, the Karate Kid franchise was dead in the water. While the original 1984 film was a massive hit, earning more than $100 million off an $8 million budget, each subsequent film saw diminishing returns, with the fourth, largely forgotten film struggling to make its money back, and the 2010 remake of the original failing to connect with audiences. But things were about to change for the fate of The Karate Kid when, in 2013, CBS's How I Met Your Mother pulled a really clever gag, reuniting William Zabka and Ralph Macchio for their episode The Bro Mitzvah, and reigniting the rivalry that started it all. I hate Ralph Macchio. The Karate Kid was William Zabka, star pupil of the Cobra Kai Dojo. And she told me, Hey, you're one of the few people in the world who truly gets the Karate Kid movie. While this wasn't the first time the original actors reprised their roles in a funny pop culture reference, it introduced the idea that maybe bad boy Johnny Lawrence was unfairly represented. And then, thanks to the guys who wrote Harold and Kumar, it evolved into Cobra Kai. The first season premiered on YouTube Red before being bought and distributed by Netflix by season three. And that first season holds a 100% Rotten Tomato score, with each subsequent season remaining in the 90s. So in an age where revivals of older IPs is not only common, not only the norm, but frankly done to death, what makes Cobra Kai stand out as one of, if not the best revivals in television history? Well, it all comes down to the showrunner's approach to the series, which can be boiled down to a single word, balance. Bringing back a beloved franchise is tough, as seemingly no matter what direction the show creators go in, they're gonna face heavy criticism. If they try to branch out too far from the original, telling a different story and with characters acting differently than before, then they'll face heavy criticism about a lack of respect for the original. Conversely, if the creators stick too closely to the concepts found in the original, then they'll face criticism over simply rehashing the original for a quick unearned paycheck. Blending elements of the old and new is something that very few sequels seem to get right, and it's where Cobra Kai really stands head and shoulders above the rest. In terms of story, Cobra Kai loosely follows the outlines of the original films in very broad ways, while not simply repeating the exact same story beats. Take season one for example, which follows a basic structure of the original film. A young kid, new to town, turns to karate in order to defend himself against his aggressors, culminating in his ultimate victory in a championship fight. However, in addition to focusing heavily on the rivalry between Daniel and Johnny, Cobra Kai also makes key changes in the nature of the basic plot, adding depth to the basic story. When Miguel, Johnny's star pupil of Cobra Kai, fights in the tournament at the end of season one, he wins against his opponent, but by using the same methods Johnny was once forced to use against Daniel, taking cheap shots to his injured opponent. While his student might have won, it's a hollow victory, leaving Johnny perhaps even more defeated than by an actual defeat. The series hits several familiar plot points but in wildly different ways, eliciting different tones and emotions, balancing the familiar with the new and unexpected. Cobra Kai expertly blends comedy with drama and over-the-top 80s bombastic action, knowing when to tell a joke and when to introduce tension and stakes. The varying tones of Cobra Kai are reflected in its cinematography, which, like everything else, feels well-balanced, evoking the originals with familiar imagery but without directly copying shots frame for frame. It's produced for television, and because of this, the lighting composition tends to be more even and the framing more loose, but it does an excellent job capturing enough of the feel of the originals while adhering to the specific medium. Perhaps balanced even more perfectly is Cobra Kai's approach to its characters. Cobra Kai shows the utmost respect for its legacy characters, while simultaneously growing and developing them in natural ways as the story progresses. Take the series' two leads, Johnny Lawrence and Daniel LaRusso, as the perfect example. In the original film, Daniel was the classic underdog. He grows up poor, he's kind-hearted, he's altruistic. While Johnny was the ultimate 80s high school bully. Rich, popular, and overly aggressive. Cobra Kai keeps their core personalities the same, but throws them in opposite scenarios which feel like logical steps forward. 
Daniel now lives in luxury, capitalizing off of his fame and letting a good deal of it go to his head. But nevertheless, he's a good person at heart and strives to maintain peace. Johnny now takes on the underdog role. He's down on his luck and desperate to prove himself, but without losing his edge. He's still mean and abrasive, but now he's more sympathetic and relatable. Throughout the series, both Daniel and Johnny begin to understand one another and learn from each other. And where another show might have portrayed one or the other as the clear-cut hero and their style of karate as superior, this series takes a much more nuanced approach, with both Johnny and Daniel and their respective dojos needing to learn from one another. Daniel's approach of defense and a calm center, learned from his sensei Mr. Miyagi, proves beneficial to several of his students who struggle with aggression and controlling their emotions, but shows its weakness when confronted with an enemy that doesn't play by the rules. Conversely, Johnny's old school machismo approach to karate, summed up by Cobra Kai's mantra of strike first, strike hard, no mercy, proves to be hugely beneficial to his students that lack confidence and allows them to channel their dormant aggression. But it lacks finesse and is rendered useless in situations where diplomacy is needed. The series does an excellent job of giving a balanced perspective on a multitude of relatable issues that extend beyond simply karate tournaments, and suggests that maybe the best pathway forward might lie somewhere between extremes. Cobra Kai brings a balanced and thoughtful approach to sequels that should be the model of how to revive a franchise, both adding new elements while respecting what came before. And if you haven't yet, you'll absolutely want to tune in to this series. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. Who's his name?